Okay, so once you click on the link from my spreadsheet, or from my website to get to the spreadsheet, you're gonna click yes, make a copy. And it'll happen, just wait for it. Make a copy, do it. Okay, so once it makes a copy, of course you're gonna wanna rename it because being copy and template is kinda ridiculous. So up in the corner, you're just gonna click on where it says copy advanced spreadsheet template. And we're gonna call it advanced spreadsheet underscore 101 underscore the day of the week so if you're Thursday you'll put R for Thursday underscore your last name your last name and your first initial all right so there now it's renamed and of course you want to click on the blue share button up in the upper right hand corner because we don't want it to be private we're going to change it from being private to at least anyone with the link or public on the web hit done. So what you'll notice here is in Google Spreadsheet that text actually automatically does word wrap. That's not true in Excel. In Excel you have to turn on word wrap. So what you want to do is you want to click on the cell itself. So make sure you click on the cell and then you look up in the toolbar right up here is like looks like um, I can edit this out. Do-over. Okay. Well, I have a way to tell myself it's a do-over. I'm going to do this whole thing yellow. Okay. I'm going to do the whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we want to do is, by default, we have word wrap. But what I want to do is I actually want to stretch these words across multiple cells, kind of like a header over a table. So I'm going to highlight, highlight four cells together. I'm going to highlight these four cells together. And then you'll notice the icon in the toolbar, it looks like two rectangles with arrows crashing into each other. It's right up next to the uh, borders. And if you click on that, it merges them all into one cell. So it takes that four cells and merges them into one cell. So now when you make a spreadsheet, by default, it calls the spreadsheet Sheet 1. So if you'll look down here, if you look down here at the tab where it says sheet one, well this doesn't really very telling of what this sheet is about. And so you want to share your spreadsheets, you need to tell people what the sheet's about. So you're going to click on the little arrow next to where it says sheet one, just click on the little arrow, mm -hmm. and we're going to go up to rename, and we're going to rename it merge. Rename it merge. Okay. All right, so going to the next tab, the next tab says resizing rows and columns. Resizing rows and columns. So you'll notice column A is really wide and column B is skinny and but really tall or fat, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to get your cursor in between the A and the B. So you'll notice how it switches from an arrow into... Uh, to a, from a cursor into a one-way arrow. Now, if you're using a PC or a different browser, your cursor might look a little bit different. So when you're in between, you have to be up at the top where it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In between the two columns, you're actually able to click and drag and resize the column. You, got, you can't be on the cells. You have to be up just at the very top. You wanna, you're looking for that cursor to change. You've got to be really patient. Scoot up. Up here. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how you can make each of the columns wider or shorter. Okay. So then you can actually do the same thing with the rows, but you have to be all the way over on the edge, all the way over on the edge over here. So as you go in between, in between the rows, you notice that I'm able to then stretch out and make the rows fatter or skinnier. So I take this really fat row and I make it a skinny row. Okay. Now what if I wanted like a lot of this to be a certain size? I don't want to go through and do each column separately. That would be ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight multiple columns at once. Now honestly this is super tricky if you're using a trackpad. So you got to be, click away, you got to be on 
the letters at the top, at the columns on the top, and you got to kind of be fast so you can highlight a whole bunch of columns at the same time. Okay? And so then you need to grab, you can resize any column. I'm going to resize here in between F and G, but I can resize in between any of the columns that I highlighted. When I let go, it'll resize all of them exactly the same. You're doing the cells. So again, you gotta be, you can't be on the cells, you gotta be all the way at the top, so you're pretty much touching the B. Oh. And then you have to drag along the top. So you notice that it's highlighting the entire columns. Yes. And then resize them. So look, I'm gonna resize this really fat. Now they all became fat. And then I resize them and they all become skinny. Oh, got it. Got it. And the same thing is for rows. So if I highlight a chunk of rows, you have to be on the edge where all the numbers are on the side, and then you got to highlight a chunk of rows. And then when I resize one row, they all resize exactly the same way. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now another little trick is if you actually come up here to the corner, you click on the very corner, way up here in between the A and the 1, the corner, and you see how it highlights the whole thing. This is really handy if you want to format all of the cells or if you want to copy and paste one sheet to another sheet. I actually do that a lot. I like to click on the corner. So now when I do that, when I get in between any two columns, all of the columns are going to resize the same. And if I get in between any two rows, all the rows are also going to resize the same, except if they have a text in it, they'll word wrap. So, if you, so again, if I click on the corner, it highlights the entire cell. i got to be right up here. Okay, right? So if I get in between any two columns, I can make them all fatter or all skinnier in the same way. Okay. Okay, so the next tab is freezing. So we're going to come to the next tab. You're looking down here at the bottom where it says freezing. And so what you'll notice is as I scroll, I lose. What, what the heck is in column C? I have no idea. I don't know what this stands for. And over here in column F, 4, 1, 3, what does this even mean? So if when I come up to the top, I see that I have column headers, but as I scroll, I lose that. So what you need to do is you actually want to go up into up into the very corner here and you'll notice that as I kind of my mouse becomes from an arrow the cursor into the grabby hand yeah. so you got to talk now I got to be real patient because you want to make sure you've got the grabby hand on there I'm going to click it and I'm going to pull it down one row so I want to it's this blue bar okay and so now you'll notice as I scroll, here it goes from line 1 to line 7. So as I scroll, it has frozen the top row. Now the other thing is as I scroll to the right, like I'm grading into a grade book, whose grade am I putting in here? I don't know because I lost their name. So what I want to do is if I come back up to the corner, you see the little grabby bar? I'm going to grab it and I'm going to pull it over so that I freeze the first three rows. So now when I scroll to the right, you'll notice I go from column C now to H, I, J, but I'm not losing the first and last name columns. Now the thing to be careful about is if you freeze the rows or the columns, if you want to insert rows or sometimes do some editing, sometimes it gets a little fussy. Mm -hmm. And so what you'd have to do is you want to just get it back to the grabby hand and pull the freeze bars back. Insert your rows and columns, your editing, or whatever you're trying to do, and then you can just go ahead and move them back the way you wanted to. So sometimes that it won't let you delete the row underneath the freeze bar, for example. So you just move it, do what you want to do, and then move it back. Okay. Whoops, what did I just do? Okay, so then I want to go to the sorting tab.
Then I want to go to the sorting tab. So I'm actually going to go ahead and move these directions out of the way. You can do that just by clicking on the drawing. And then if you get in the white area up at the top, you can actually click it and drag it out of the way. Or if you want, there's a little arrow there and you can just choose delete. So remember, you can always click on the original link that you clicked on to make a new copy, to make a new, new copy, and you can play around with this again later. So you'll notice now as I sort, as I scroll down, I lose my column headers, right? So, but the other problem I have is if I, if I sort this, I lose my column headers also because it thinks that the column headers are just another piece of data. Command Z, Command Z puts everything back. So I showed you how to do that, and I just hit Command Z, and it goes right back the way it was if you tried that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to grab the bar. I want to grab the freeze bar, and I want to pull it down. So that way I have frozen the column headers. So if I've frozen the column headers, then when I sort the columns, it won't sort the column headers into the data. So then I got to decide how do I want to sort these. So if you actually go right up into the very, very top where it says A, B, C, D, you'll notice these arrows show up that only show up when you hover on them. So how do we want to sort these? Probably by last name, right? So I'm going to hover over. I'm going to find that little arrow by last name on column D. And when I find that arrow then the option is to sort the sheet from A to Z. So when I do that, it's going to sort it by their last name. Now you're thinking to yourself, why is Von Fakerton up at the top? That's not alphabetical. Now if you will double click on that cell, what you'll notice, there's actually a space bar in front of his name. Right? So I actually need to delete that space bar from in front of the V, enter, now I'm going to go ahead and click on the little arrow again so that I can click on the little arrow. Come here, baby. Click on the little arrow. I'm going to sort it from A to Z. And now Von Fakerton's at the bottom. Try it again. You were like clicked on it. So you want to up at the very top and in the column D. There you go. Okay, now what if I wanted to sort by first name? Then I want to hover over column C up to the very top, and I'm going to get that little drop down arrow. And then from the drop down arrow, I'm going to choose to sort the sheet from A to Z. And so there I'm able to go through and I can sort all these. Now, if you want, you can also choose to filter. And so filter is this icon right here where it looks like a triangle with a little stick on it all the way kind of at the end almost, all the way to the end. Okay. So if you turn on filtering, this gets a little bit trickier because you'll notice what it has is now it puts an arrow in the column header as opposed to the arrow, the drop down arrow in the top where the letters are, right? right. And so then when I go to filtering, I'm going to clear these and I'd say only show me Alice and Amber. So I can check box which ones it'll show me. It'll filter them out and it'll hide the rest of them. So I'm only going to find Alice and Amber maybe. And so that just gives me, so you now notice it goes one, two, three, four, six. It's only showing me the rows that have that filtered data. Now I'm going to turn off, I'm going to toggle off the filtering. I'm going to turn filtering back on so I can now filter and I, let me clear these. I only want to see the kids who are expelled. So I'm going to click on, so now it's only showing me expulsion as the type of offense. And I am able to filter more than one so I can say what type of offense and I can filter by their name. So I only want Alice's who have been expelled. So in this case I have two of them. And then just go back to the toolbar, this little triangle with us on a stick and I turn off the filters. So I'm able to sort all the data, but all the data is there by finding the little triangle at the very, very top where the letters are. And then I'm able to turn on filtering. I'm able to turn on filtering, which gives me an arrow 
in the column header, which is below the letter, to actually get rid of some of the data. It doesn't really get rid of it, it just hides it. And toggle that off. All right, so just another little trick if you don't know this. If you go between any two of the columns, sure, I can drag them and make them fatter, but if you double click, if you double click, it automatically resizes the column to adjust it to the width of the widest amount of text, eh, more or less. The other trick you can do is you can actually click on the corner and select all of the data. And then when you double click, it actually resizes. Let me double click. In be, I'm double clicked in between. It resized each column appropriately. It didn't size them all the same. It sized them. You notice some of them are skinnier and some of them are fatter based on the width. So you notice the student ID column. It's the width that it is so it can accommodate that really long student ID that I have down there apparently. Okay, so that is the sorting tab. So now we're going to go to the cell referencing tab. Cell referencing tab. So we're going to make a multiplication table. Just go ahead and click delete on the drawing if the drawing's in your way. Just go to delete. Okay, so what I want is I want that the left column is multiplied by that top row, right? So in this cell, in cell C3, I'm going to start with an equal sign. So I'm going to start with an equal sign. Now what do I want to do in cell C3, mm -hmm. you want to put the joint in cell there? C5. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so be careful. You're not talking about the three, which is in actually in row five, okay. but the three over here on the side. Okay. So we're going to say this equals, and I'm going to click on B3. I'm going to click on the B3. Okay. And then I'm going to say times, that's on the eight key, shift eight. Oh, okay. That makes the times, right? And then I want to multiply it by C2. So I'm going to click on C2. Okay. You lost me. Equal. Right. So I'm going to do it again. Okay. So I say equals. I want to multiply this one times that one. So I'm going to click on the first one, which is in B3. Okay. Your equal sign accidentally got on the one. The equal sign has to come first. It keeps. Sometimes on Google Spreadsheet. It doesn't really do that to you on Excel, to be honest, but sometimes it'll just, it'll, it should not let me, but it'll let you, like, get the cell in front of the equal sign. The equal okay. sign has to be first. Okay. Equal I'm sign has to be it. first. Okay, so it's B3, and then I want to take B3, and I want to multiply it by C2. So I'm going to just go ahead and either click on C2 or type C2. So you see how it's multiplying those two cells together. So go ahead and push enter. So let's try that again. This equals in the one next to it. I went to the right. This equals C3, or excuse me, B3, B3 times, in this case it would be D2, because I want to multiply the 1 times the 2. Push enter. Right. How about let's do the one right underneath it? Okay, right where you at, Lisa? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put an equal sign, and in this case it would be B4 times D2. Now, I want to do, push enter, it multiplies them together. Okay. I want to do 12 by 12. I'd have to write these formulas 144 times. That doesn't sound like very much fun, does it? No. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the, back on this one in C3. Go ahead and click on C3. Okay. okay. Now, do you see this little rectangle that shows up in the corner? There's like a little square in the bottom right-hand yes, corner. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna, and you see how the cursor changes to crosshairs? Yes. So I'm going to click. I'm going to go hold down on that, and I'm going to drag it across. Okay. How far across? Okay. But notice when I just drag it some. Because it actually is going to be like, what? This was no good. Go ahead, just drag it. There we go. And you're like, okay, 
is 1 times 11, 3,991,000. It's not, right? Like, this didn't quite work. So let's go ahead and let's just double click on that 3 million cell. So I'm going to double click on that, and you'll notice what it's showing me is it's multiplying 1 to the left times 1 above it. Yep. Because when I drag it, it drags the pattern. So my pattern was 1 to the left and 1 above. Okay. okay, but that's not really my pattern. So let's go back. Let's just delete these. Just delete out all those center gets. So if you'll just highlight, highlight the center. Okay. And of course, we could have just hit Command-Z and just gotten rid of it, right? Okay, so, so go up a little bit. Okay. Up to this. No, not that one. That one. one. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to get rid of the center. So that I still have my 1 through 12 on the side and the top, right? I hit delete. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to C3 and I say this equals, mm -hmm. touch the equal sign. Okay, so equals B3 times C2. So I see it's one to the left and one up. But the thing is, when I take this pattern, my pattern is not one to the left, one up. My pattern is multiply the left column by the top row, okay. right? Okay. So the left column is column B, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that B. In front of the B? In the B3. Oh, put a dollar sign? So equals dollar sign B3 because okay. I'm locking down the B. Now in the row, I'm not I don't want it to always be column C, but I do want it to always be row two. Right? Okay, so I need to lock down the two because I always want it to be row two. Okay. So put a dollar sign in front of the two. And get rid of the C. No, I still need the C. Okay. Right. I'm gonna push enter. Okay, now I'm going to click back on that cell because I want to copy that formula, right? So as you go over the corner, you'll notice the cursor changes. Hold that down and pull it across, and you'll notice it shows me 1 times 11 is 11. Okay, now if I double click on that, what you'll notice is that in this particular case, it says it equals B3 times M2, right? And so it's because... I wanted the column to move. As I go to the right, I need the I need it to go to each column. I need that to change. But I don't want the row to change. I want to always be looking up there at row 2. Whereas on um, the other one, I do want it to be row 3 all the way across here. But I don't want the B to move. I wanted the B to stay. So i got to put the dollar sign in front of what I want to freeze. Mm, okay. okay. So now I'm actually going to click on that, that cell with the 11. And you see the little... Crosshairs on the corner. Just push enter. And click on it once. Pull it down. Okay. I'm going to highlight all the way to the all the way to these because I actually want to copy the whole row. Again. So yeah, but not from the just from the one with the pattern or with the formulas, right? So right. So copy, highlight them across. You okay. see, I have them all highlighted. Right. And then I'm gonna whoops. And then I'm gonna grab the corner and I'm gonna pull down. So I'm copying the whole rows. And so you'll see, like here, I've got 3 times 11 is 33. Here, 6 times 4. 4 times 6 is 24. It made my multiplication table. Nice. All right. We did those. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go to the split tab. Split tab. And do you see how I have this nice list of names? You might want to delete the directions. I have this nice list of names. You ever had a spreadsheet with a nice list of names? And you're like, I'd really like the first name to be in a different box than the last name? Yes. Okay, so now what you do have to do is you'll notice how I have blank columns. You have to have blank columns for them to split up into. Okay. Okay, so I usually like to have three or four because sometimes people have a middle initial or two last names, and that messes up my thing. So... I need to make sure I have enough columns for everybody's number of names. Yeah. So I'm going to put equals in column. into B1, into the blank cell right next to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the formula SPLIT. So I'm going to say equals split. And I'm going to put a parenthesis. Now what cell do I want to split up? I'm going to click here on Okuan Kwan. 
So I'm going to split up A1, and then you need a comma. So a lot, when you're doing formulas, you, like, you have to give it different pieces of information, and you separate them by commas. So my first piece of information is what cell do you want to split up? Comma, what do I want to split it up by? So what splits the first and the last name? That's right, it's the space bar. Now, I can't just type a space bar, though. When, whenever you're writing formulas into a database or a spreadsheet, you have to put quotations around all of your text fields. Okay, so put a quotation mark, and then space bar and a quotation mark. And then I'm going to end the parenthesis. Enter. All right, so let's go here to B2, and we're going to try it again. So I'm going to put equals, S-P-L-I-T, parenthesis, equals split, parenthesis. Now I want to split up Olette Cameron. And I'm going to say comma, quotation, space bar, quotation, parenthesis. So you got to click on the Olette Cameron who's in A2. Oh. So you can actually type A2 or you can just click on it. Uh, you have too many space bars. No, it's worked anyway. Okay. okay. It's fine. Okay. So let's just do it one more time. Equals split with a parenthesis. We're going to split up Perestia Robati. So I'm going to click on A3, comma, quotation, space bar, quotation, parenthesis. Enter. Now, do you see where the corner is? So you can grab the corner. Mm -hmm. Pull that down. Corner of yeah, of the cell. Where, Tara? Yeah, of the last name. Because that, that one has the formula in it, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you take the cell with the formula and you pull that down the corner. Just pull it down. All the way? All the way. Go crazy. And let go. And it's going to split up the whole column. So you're able to split up everybody's names all at once, wow. right? All right, let's scroll over here just a little bit. So we're looking at Mohammed. Over here in column F. Okay, so we're going to split up these names. This is common to see last name, comma, first name, right? Mm -hmm. So this equals S-P-L-I-T equals split. In the G column? In the G column. Okay. You can put it in any cell that you want. You just need to make sure you have room for the name to go, right? Okay. And then I'm going to click on F1, comma. Now what is splitting up the Afifi and Mohammed? Which, by the way, I got random last names and random first names, and I just put them all together. It's a space. It's not a space. What's, What's in between a Fifi, a Fifi and Mohammed? Comma. And, it's not a comma. It's a comma and a space. Oh. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, right? So I'm going to do quotation, comma, space bar, quotation. And then I have to end the parenthesis. So that's kind of mm -hmm. like the trick is you got to get... A lot of people don't think about the space bar. They'll say, oh, it's separated by a comma, but there's actually two characters in there. So oh, push I enter, can... notice it'll split it up by first name and last name. Error, so I must have done something. Okay, so I'm going to put equals, S-P-L-I-T, and I click on, on cell, in this case, F2. You didn't type split. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, okay. So the... comma. Now, all of my text has to be in quotation marks. So, quotation, and it's what separates the last name and the first name is a comma and a space bar. So, and then end the quotations and the parentheses. Okay. You have to type the word split. Okay. I did, and it keeps going. Okay, equals S P L I T. No, don't, don't pick that. Just type No, it. I'm not picking it. But parenthesis, it's... open parenthesis. Now, click on the cell. Okay. So sometimes in Google Spreadsheet, once you've already clicked on it, it doesn't like to let you click on it again. Yeah. Uh, Excel doesn't do that, but, you know, okay. it's also not collaborative. So you just type in F2 by hand then. Then put comma. Okay. Quotation. And then whatever it's split up by, in this case, is a comma and a space bar. And the quotation. And the parenthesis. Enter. Okay, so now once we got it to work, we're actually going to grab the formula and pull it down, and it'll split up everybody. 
And obviously I can just take that all the way down the page. It'll just keep splitting up everybody. Okay. All right, so we did that one. So now we're going to be on the concatenation tab. Concatenation. That's, that is the funnest word to say. But you know what? The good news is you don't have to know that it's called concatenate. You don't need to know that. Don't we have a friend who's called that? I told you this story. Thank you. All right, so we're on concatenation. And so you'll notice that I have first and last names in different columns, right? So we can even pretend that we already split it. Okay? So I'm just going to go here in C2. And I want to push the first and the last name together. Won't that be nice? So I'm going to put equals. And I'm going to take the first name. And I'm going to click on it so it's A2. That cell referencing, I just put, say what's in the cell rather than typing it actually. And then I'm going to use the ampersand symbol. It's on the 7 key, so you'll do shift 7 is the ampersand symbol. So I want the first name and I want the last name. So I'm going to click on last name B2. B2? Uh-huh. I'm going to push enter. Oh, that's not quite as awesome as I was hoping it would be. How about you? No. So let's try it on this next line. I'm going to say this equals. I'm going to click here on Vincent. He's A3. Okay. Ampersand. You know what would be much nicer for that name right above it? You know what would be much nicer? A space. A space. Right? So I need to do all text has to be in quotation. So it has to be quotation, space bar, quotation. Don't forget your ampersand. Right. Mm -hmm. Ampersand, quotation. So Space bar, quotation, ampersand, because and, ampersand is, an, is the and word. I think okay. you've seen it used as and, like the uh, stake and anchor, and they'll use the ampersand symbol. Three. Right, and then I will click on their last name, which is in B3, okay. and I push enter, and now I have them push back together. With a space bar. So maybe if we want to do last name, comma, first, right? Mm -hmm. So this equals, mm -hmm. I want their last name, so it's B4, mm -hmm. ampersand. Now, what do you want? We want comma, right? Last name, comma, first, so I need quotation. It has to be in text. Text has to be in quotations. <laughs> so quotations. Okay. Ampersand, then the quotation. And I want like a comma uh -huh. and a space bar. Okay. So otherwise they'll be all mashed together. Right. And then a quotation. Okay. And, and then and, mm -hmm. so I need the ampersand. I want their first name. Okay. Ready? Enter. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'm going to. Just click on the corner and pull that down, and I've got last name, comma, first name. So you got to do it on the cell that has the formula. So right now, Lisa, you copy and paste oh. the cell that has nothing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so just pull that down. Boom. Okay, so let's go over here to email address. And then, so, like, your email is your first name and your last name at gmail.com, right? All right. And so what I'm going to do is we're just going to do that. So we're going to say equals... And then it's their first name, so I'm going to click on first name. Now, do email addresses have space bars in it? No. no. So, since email addresses do not have space bars, I'm just going to go ampersand. I'm going to click on their last name. Okay. And then I'm going to say ampersand. Okay. And then quotation, because I'm going to put some text here. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to say gmail.com. Quotation. Or... Just push enter. And you see that it just made it right into an email address? Okay. Oh, you know what? I messed this up. Let me double click on this. If you double click on the cell, you can edit the... I, it's at gmail.com. It looked a little funny, but now I fixed it, right? Now, do I So place, let's do it again. Oh, do I place the at sign in front of... The at symbol has to be in the quotations because it's part of the text, right? So... Basically what it is is that I'm writing a formula that it, it, it is 
giving uh, directions. If it's not directions, it goes in quotations. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this one, let's do the one underneath it. We'll do it again. It says equals, mm -hmm. and I want their first name, yeah. ampersand their last name with no space bar, ampersand quotation, and maybe you're at a school district, right? Like alameda.k12.ca.us. Oops, I need the at symbol. At alameda.k12.ca. Right? A lot of times you're at a school district and they all have this really long right. domain name that goes after everybody's. And it automatically appended that. Now, if I click back on that cell that I wrote the formula in, if I click one time, I think you double clicked. If you double click, it shows you the formula. Right, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, so if I click on it just singularly so that I can get the little rectangle in the corner mm -hmm. and I pull it down, mm -hmm. then it automatically populates everybody's email address. So long as it goes according to the naming nomenclature, obviously. But that, I can then copy and paste that into the to fit function. Okay. All right. Let's go here to duplicate. Okay, and so this one's pretty easy. I just have a sheet of data and I want to, I don't know, do something else with it. I like to especially do this when I do use a Google form because all of the data goes into a sheet. Mm -hmm. And I like to be able to mess around with the data and delete some columns and move things around and change people's okay. answers or whatever. But I don't really want to mess with it, really. Mm -hmm. So I duplicate the sheet so I don't mess up the original data. I, I just mess up a copy. Okay. So down on the tab where it says duplicate, you see this arrow? So if I click on that, I have a whole bunch of options. Like I can delete the tab, the whole sheet, not the whole workbook, just right. the sheet, right? And then I can also rename it, but I and I can also protect it. So I can say, let's say if I was sharing this with you, Lisa, I can make it so that you can look at it, but you can't edit that sheet. Okay, okay? but you could edit other sheets. Right. So I'm actually going to go here to duplicate. And if I choose duplicate, it duplicates the sheet. So now I have a copy. So now I can be like, okay, I don't really want that column. I can make it skinnier. Actually, if you if you hover over the column at the top, you can actually choose to hide the column. So as you as you hover over, I can actually highlight two columns. Click the arrow, and I highlight hide. I can hide both of the columns at once. So I can hide multiple columns at one time. Okay. All right, you ready for the next one? Yep. Okay, paste special. Okay, so what I want to do here is I've got a list of names, and I would really like to email all of these people. I don't have their email address. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I need to do is I need to split up their first and their last name. So remember how I do that? Okay. Equals. Split. Split, parenthesis, click on their name, comma, quotation, space bar, quotation, there's no comma in there, in parenthesis, enter. Okay, now take that little corner and we're going to pull it all the way down the list. Okay. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. So now I have all their first names and last names, right? Nice. Okay, now I'm going to put in here in column D, I'm going to put equals. And I'm going to say L-E-F-T. Because what I, what I want in this particular school district, they don't do first name, last name match together. They do first initial and their last name, right? So like my email is akeeler at q.org. So how do I get that A keeler? So I'm going to say left and then do an open parenthesis. And I want the left first initial, right? So I'm going to click on the first name, which is in B1. And I say comma, one, which means the first one initial. If I put two, give me the first two letters. Put three, give me the first three letters or characters. I just want the first one character, right? Ampersand and... It's an email, so no space bars. Mm -hmm. 
but I would like their last name. So I'm going to click on their last name, C1. Ampersand. Quotation. At alameda.k12.ca.us. Or whatever county you're in or school district or whatever. Okay. Push enter. Oops. All right, so I got the email address, right? Yeah, I forgot to put the... So you got to make sure you end the quotations. Okay. Okay, now grab oh, the corner yeah. and pull it down. <coughs> and it's going to make the whole list of email addresses all at once. <coughs> I didn't come out, but I must have okay, so let's one of the let me Command Z, and I'll do it again. So I say this equals. I want the left equals L E F T equals L E F T left of their of and be in this case. Don't forget the parentheses. Okay. B B your B one or B two. Yeah. Okay. So B two. Comma, one, because I want one character. I just want their first initial. Okay? Ampersand, their last name. Ampersand, quotation, at... FresnoCounty.k12.ca.us. I uh, have to have the quotation in the end. You have to have matching quotations. And then the just push enter. There is no parenthesis. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because it, it, I know it feels like there should be a parenthesis, but actually the parenthesis was on the left, and we already did the end parenthesis for that. Okay. So push enter. It's still not coming. Oh, you don't have the end parenthesis after the one on the left. Oh. All right, because that, that okay. ends that formula. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at the formula, it's left, open parenthesis, B2, comma, 1, and then I'm ending the left, that the formula for the left. Okay. So I'm taking that formula okay. and I'm putting it with the last name yeah. and I'm putting it with the rest of the email address. That's what I was missing, that second parenthesis. So yeah. then you can just go ahead and pull that down, all the way down. Okay, so then what you'll notice, though, is that if you double-click on any one of those cells, that it's still the formula, right? Yeah. And that's fine, but, you know, if I already led, like, copy this and paste it here next to it, like if I just copy and paste, mm -hmm. it'll do it wrong. you notice these don't match. And the reason for that is because when I double-click on it, you'll notice it's the pattern is to the left, and so when I moved one over, well, that's not in the first name column, now it's in the last name column, it's just doing weird things. So um, what you want to be able to do then is I actually want to highlight the cells that have a formula in it. And I want to right click and hit copy. And then when I go to paste, I'm going to paste it right on top of itself. I'm going to paste the same place. I'm going to choose Paste Special. I love Paste Special because what I do is I'll write all these formulas, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't really want them to be formulas. I just did them so that I could, like, make something. And now mm -hmm. once it's that thing, I want it to stay that way. Okay. So I do Paste Special and I choose Paste Values Only. Okay. And then now when I double-click on this, you'll notice it's not a formula. It's the actual email address. So I, I actually can do is I can actually highlight the whole column. I don't have mm -hmm. to just highlight a certain amount of text. I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose copy, I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste special, and I'm going to paste the values. So I highlighted all the columns, I copied it, and I pasted it right on top of itself, but I got rid of all the formulas. So you remember that these were all formulas, but now when I double click on them, they're the actual just names and email addresses. So that's a really good trick to know. Okay, so let's go to the Let's go to the Charts tab. Okay, so I'm going to actually highlight all of my data. 
just want to highlight all of my data. So if you want to make a chart, you have to highlight your data. So I'm just going to start in cell A1, and I click and I hold down with my mouse, and I come across, and I get the first three cells, and then I pull that down so I can highlight the whole table. Oh, okay. So I just want to highlight my data. I don't necessarily want to highlight all three columns. Oh, just the data. I might want to highlight all three columns, but in this particular case, I just want the data. Now, don't forget to nudge that over to the left to get all three columns. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so then there is um, a chart. It says insert chart up in the toolbar. See that it's right next to the filter? So I'm going to choose insert chart. And then, yep, the hit chart. That's fine. You can do it from the pull down too. You can also do it from the insert menu. Mm -hmm. So you can see that looks awfully funky. Um, so let's go over here to where it says charts, the second tab here, okay. and let's figure out what kind of chart would actually look good because that one ain't it. So I don't know, probably like want to do a bar graph, right? Yeah. What is this? Right, so I'm going to choose my bar graph, okay. and then I'm going to come back here to the start. And so it's from A1 to C50. So I'm going to actually make this, so I need to reevaluate this because it's, it's trying to do two columns out of three columns, right? Okay. So I'm going to click, do you see where it's like a little grid in the corner? And if I hover over it says get the data range, up here where it says charts A1 to C50. Oh, okay. okay, I actually want to click on that oh, because it's going to let me redo this. It didn't like that I had two columns to be the, I'm just going to do last name and test score. So I'm, what I'm doing is I re-highlighted, so you can just kind of click there to turn the whole thing not blue away from that. Okay. Right? But this is you what can move that. Mine. Just just move, no, don't click out of it, just move it. Okay. Right. okay? Now you're going to just click anywhere to make it not blue anymore. Now you're going to highlight the test scores and the last name and all the data underneath it. Okay, so I click on the word test scores and I drag it over so it highlights last name. Yeah, go to the left a little bit. No, yeah, right there. And then I want to come down so it ends up highlighting all of the data. Here, Lisa, watch. I, I click here and then I go to the left and then I pull it down. And I want to keep pulling it down until I have the entire chart. So that way, because, I mean, if I'm going to do a chart, I really only want two columns, okay. right? So my problem is that I had three columns, and it looked super funky. So I'm going to click OK. Now when I switch it to a bar graph, then it makes a lot more sense. You can just click on the little, you can go to charts. You can choose what kind of chart you want. So and then I hit start, okay. and then it's going to, it should insert, there it comes. Choose, open the spreadsheet, I pushed the wrong thing. Let me try this again. I'm going to go to the, the chart wizard, insert chart, B1 to C50, charts, I'll do columns, there's a bunch of things you can customize on the Customize tab, so here is my data. Um, but if I do Insert, it should just insert the chart. Oh, there it is. It did insert it. I just pushed something funky. So you'll notice it's just kind of like free-floating in there? Yes. Mine okay. That too and I now, there's a little it. arrow in the corner. I can actually move it to its own sheet. Mm -hmm. So if I do that, then it makes it all big and nice. All right, let me delete that chart. Okay. So just to one more time, is I I want two columns of data, and I highlight the data. I highlight the two columns of data. I don't want to highlight three columns of data. And then I want to go to the chart. I can go insert chart, or I can find that same icon in the toolbar. Okay, and so it kind of gives me a little preview of what it's going to look like. 
doesn't look very good as a pie chart. You know, it's like I figure out which one looks the best and has the data the way that I want it to. If I go over here to charts, I can get more kinds of charts. And if I go to customize, I can change things like so it just says the yeah, class grades, right? And then I can change the colors um, and some different features about the graph, make it whatever. So when I click insert, it actually, if I scroll up, it actually inserts it in there free floating. Yes. So it is free floating my graph. And then if I want to, I can click on this little down arrow. And you'll notice I have several options. One of them is I can move it to its own sheet. Mm -hmm. I can also save the image. So I can actually save it as just like a picture file. So that's just oh. how I can make graphs. And they're not necessarily in the spreadsheet. They're just saved to my computer for me to use however I want. That's great. Okay. So that's all I want to do today. I don't want to do any more. I know there's some more tabs, but we're just going to ignore those and stop here.